illustrate in this screencast an alien skull with flames avatar or logo in Inkscape version 0 0.45. So let's get to it. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to grab our circle tool and we're going to draw an ellipse. About like that. Okay, and we're going to slide this up. I'm using the Tango, or the Tango colors. Um, for the fill, I've used our third gray in from the left. And for our stroke, I'm using the second gray in from the right. And I'm also using a 10 for the stroke width. Okay, now what I'm going to do is duplicate this. And I'm going to hold the control key down and we're going to select that right handle. Okay, now what I'm going to do, we're going to rotate this just a little bit. I'll right click on this, and hit duplicate, and we're going to save a copy for later. This one I'm going to bring in. Now I'm going to duplicate this one, mirror it, and we're going to throw it over to the other side. I'm going to select both circles. We're going to group those together. I'll select our larger circle and we'll align the centers. Okay, now what I can do is ungroup these smaller circles, select all three, go to path, and we're going to do a union. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is grab our rectangle tool and we're going to draw a rectangle. About like that. Okay, now I'm going to select both shapes, go to our line tool, adjust our center. I'm going to select the rectangle now, we'll go to path, object to path, and now I'm going to select our node tool. We're going to give this just a little bit of a curvature, about like that. We're going to select both shapes, path, and union. Okay, that kind of gives us our outside shape of our skull. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this. This is going to become our eye socket. Put that about right there. We're going to take this and what I'm going to do is we're going to give this a darker fill. We're going to go to our fill and stroke dialog and I'm going to give this a radial gradient. Okay, now I'm going to edit the gradient and we're going to reverse the opacity on both items here. So for the first one, we'll slide that all the way down to zero and for our second one, we'll slide it up to 255. That'll give us a, a radial gradient like we see here. Next, I'll right click, duplicate, and mirror. We're going to slide that over. Okay, I'm going to take both of these items, we're going to group them together, select our outer skull shape, and adjust our centers. Okay, that's pretty much the eyes there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, kind of draw the teeth. So I'm going to take our Bezier tool and I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to draw straight up. Okay, now we're going to select this path, go to our fill and stroke, we're going to set the size to 10 and we're going to give it a round join and a round cap. We're going to highlight this and we'll give it that dark stroke that matches our skull outline. I'm going to slide this in just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this. Slide that over. Duplicate again. Slide that over. And duplicate again. Slide that over. Okay, now I'm going to take all four of these, 
We'll go to our Align and Distribute dialog, and I'm going to select uh, this one right here. This will take all four segments and center them up. Now what I'm going to do is select all four, group them together. I'm going to select our outer shape, and we're going to align centers just like that. Take this and ungroup it. Select the inside shapes, and we're going to push it down into the stroke a little bit. There we go. That kind of gives us a, a curvature on the top as well. All right, so I'll go ahead and combine those together. All right, and that's pretty much our skull. One more thing that we're going to add is a little shine. So I'm going to draw an ellipse. I'm going to make this white. Put this about right in here, and we're going to rotate this. Okay, I think that'll do. Now I'm going to take this, we're going to go to our fill and stroke. We're going to give this a gradient. And we'll start to shine from the top and work our way in about 45 degrees or so. Okay, that's the skull. So we can take everything and combine it together and we can move it down. Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna draw some flames around here. And drawing flames kinda takes uh, some practice. Uh, I'm not real great at it myself. Um, and the tools that you can use to do that are just the freehand tool, or you can use the Bezier path tool, or you can use the calligraphy tool. Now, personally, I like the calligraphy tool combined with uh, a Wacom tablet and the pressure sensitivity turned on. Uh, that gives you a nice uh, free flow around here. Um, another tip, too, is uh, if you are flame challenged, you can uh, hit Google and under the images section, search for flames or fire and uh, maybe clip an image off the Internet and bring it in and kind of trace the outside shape kind of takes a little trial and error too. So uh, what I've done though is I've kind of drawn uh, some fire or some flames I guess and uh, I drew that out or and saved it out I guess and I'm going to bring this in. That'll kind of save us some time for the screencast. So this is what basically we want to uh, duplicate. So I'm going to take this Make it just a little bit bigger. Kind of slide it back here. Okay, now I'm going to take our flame and our skull. I'm going to center it up. Okay. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, shut off this border. So we can see what we're doing. Okay, now I'm going to take this, and um, it's uh, worth noting that when you're drawing this outside shape, sometimes you don't quite get it clean. Uh, you can see that I've got some sharp edges. Um, you can adjust those nodes, but uh, what I find that if you're using the pencil tool to go around here, you can clean that up by uh, coming into path and doing a simplify on that shape a couple times. And it's also worth noting that if you add a stroke to this outside shape, the stroke will kind of clean up the jaggies that you have around there too. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a uh, kind of like a fire color. Let's zoom in on this here. And we're going to give this a gradient. So we're going to turn on our fill and our stroke. Give this a gradient. We're going to go into edit. Okay, now our first stroke is orange. So what we're going to do is go to our second stroke, turn on its opacity, 
and we're going to select like a lighter shade something that's going to kind of fade out looks pretty good and for our dark orange we're going to select kind of an kind of a darker orange there than what tango supplies okay that looks pretty good so the next thing I'm going to do then is change my gradient. We're going to give the darkness up to the top with the lightness down below. We'll get something about like that. Now if you want to add, you know, another stop in here for gradient, if you want it to, to uh, fade out into white, you can do that too. Or you can put just a little transparency on the last stop and that will kind of blend into the skull. Um, what I like to do too on this is I like to take it and just give it a slight blur like a number one that'll kind of fade it just a little bit and this is pretty much what you're left with now what you can do is you can come in here on your flame and you can you know you can make it even a little bit more realistic by adding some highlights to it and one of the ways to do that is to grab is to uh, grab our calligraphy tool and to come in here and I have to change our color and just trace around these shapes like so and I'll just show you kind of what that does okay now that we take that calligraphy uh, path and uh, I'm going to change its transparency just a little bit, and I'm also going to blur it quite a bit. And you can see that that kind of adds a highlight right there. And you can do that in several places. You can move that around. You can also grab this one and do kind of the same thing. Blur it up quite a bit. And that's how you can add some highlights. Okay, we'll zoom back out and that is pretty much the avatar. Now it's not the greatest looking thing in the world I know but I've never claimed that I'm an artist of any kind so you know that can be used as a logo or an idea like for an avatar or something like that and I think that falls right in line with our Halloween holiday that's coming up. So thank you for watching. I'm Heathen X.